Claude the Frog A great while ago, when the world was full of wonders, there was a frog named Claude. Claude was a large green frog with black spots rigged with yellow. He was a slick, elegant amphibian and handsome if you were looking at him from a female frog's point of view. There was one little thing that was just a little odd about him. He had two enormous hind feet. When he was just a little tadpole, his mother knew that he was going to be different, because when his hind legs started to grow, they seemed to be growing too fast. Before she knew it, his hind feet were bigger than his whole little body. His body tried to catch up with his large feet, but it never did grow enough to make his feet and legs the same as the other young frogs. Like all mothers, this did not matter to her. She still loved him just as much. She felt that he was special, a very unique species of frog. She knew that there was a place for him in this world. He only had to discover what that place was. The other young frogs were not so loving. Young frogs could be cruel. Naturally, they made fun of him at every opportunity. They would ask him if he was going to join the circus and become a clown, because clowns always had big feet. They would ask him to get up on a branch of a tree and try flapping his feet to see if he could fly. They encouraged him to become a fireman so that he could stomp out forest fires. Claude didn't let their teasing get him down. He was happy with his large feet. He would tell himself that he was special. He agreed with his mother. He was unique. He thought of ways that he could do things that the other frogs couldn't do. He was good at hiding when they played hide and go seek. He could stamp his feet in the dirt, causing a dust cloud in which he could hide. If they were going to play soccer, his large feet were good for stomping down the rough patches of grass in the field. When he kicked the soccer ball, he rarely missed. He could beat all of the other frogs in swimming races. All he had to do was push hard with his feet, using them like a pair of flippers to shoot him three times as far in front of the rest. He easily won all of the swimming races with very little effort. His powerful swimming stroke often got him away from predators trying to eat him while his unfortunate friends were often caught. He was known for his bravery because he could snatch his fellow frogs away from a predator before they could get caught. His friends never asked him to play leapfrog because his feet and legs were so powerful that with one jump he would be so far ahead the others couldn't jump over him. His leap was great for catching those lazy flies that thought that it could escape from him by flying high over his head. Often, he would catch flies for the younger frogs whose tongues were still short and couldn't shoot out too far. As he got older, he kept looking for ways to earn a living. One day, he overheard some picnickers talking about the wine that they were drinking. The more that he listened, the more he knew what he was going to do. Bright and early the next day, he kissed his mother goodbye, gave his father a big hug, telling his parents that he was going to make his fortune in the world. He set out along the road to the river. 
Jumping into the St. Lawrence River, he swam up to Lake Ontario. He stopped to visit the cities that he passed, learning about the history each had to offer. He continued swimming all the way up to the Niagara Peninsula. There he found the Sun Valley winery on the shores of the lake. The verdant vineyard stretched for miles and miles in front of him. The purple and golden grapes glistened in the sun. Following the lengthy driveway through those vines, he came to a chalet-style structure. He entered the main residence in search of the owner of the winery. After introducing himself, he presented his idea to the owner. Before nightfall, he had himself a job. Claude had started his new position at that winery several years ago. He's much older now, but he's still there working at the Sun Valley Winery. If you travel up to the Niagara Peninsula to the winery, Go to the large red barn on lot number three, his favorite place. You'll know it's the right barn, because as you approach that barn, you will hear Claude singing. Oh, solo mia. Looking into the barn, you will find Claude happily crushing grapes into wine with his large Claude hoppers. Many years ago, the term Claude Hoppers was used to describe a person with very large feet. The End